I feel like our MO is always like we're way behind schedule. Is this just my mind playing tricks on me or is this really happening? And here's the thing, you make a mistake with this kind of stuff, it's like tragic and buku expensive. I'm just paranoid, I guess, is probably the best word to use to describe it. All right, so we're on the side of the road at the moment. Right here, it shows it on, and I'm not touching the brake right now. This is exactly what I was worried about. This is gonna be either an epic, like, victory, or an epic fail of an episode, because <laughs> this is our first time actually taking the new toad out, plus, if you watched our episode a few weeks ago where we just totally like this like redneck oil catch can thing, yeah. Lots of you, very helpful comments, decided that that probably wasn't a good long-term solution. And so thankfully, Eric, who helped us get the expedition set up, gave us a better option. So we'll tell you about that in a few minutes, but it's on the rig, it's installed, but we haven't actually done a like shakedown trip with all of these new things and we're kind of like going against our own advice because we always say like, you know, that shakedown trip should be maybe like an hour away or maybe two hours away, not too far. So if something bad goes wrong, you're not that far away. No, we're, we're going six hours away <laughs> on our shakedown trip. Yeah, I'm slightly nervous about that just because this, this is a lot of things that haven't been proven out yet. So <laughs> we're about to uh, prove that we're good or prove that we failed. So I don't know, stick around. We'll find out. You'll find out with us. Oh, it's scraping there. Yeah, it's scraping on the That's bottom scraping. of the tow bar, basically because it's a drop hitch, right? This new blue ox that we have is so long that when we do go over a big dip, this does drag and so, but we can't like put this directly on the hitch because to line up with the expedition, it needs to be dropped down so it's straight and not, you know, bending the tow bar one way or the other. So what we might do is just have to take that off and then go to like a Walmart parking lot, hook it up. All right. And then... Well, it's just mainly because I feel like the exit from here, that's where... If you went slower... Dad! Whoa! We could try, I mean, maybe without the toad on it. Maybe we should try where we will just go to one of the parking lots that's down the street where we can be flat to hook up. But maybe what we can do is try, just go slow and I can kind of watch. Yeah, see where it's at. And if it, if it does scrape again, then we'll know, okay, that doesn't work. Or right. if the toad's not on it, we're fine. Because what I don't want to have to do is complicate our process. Right with having to pull this off every single time that we leave yeah. this area. The entrances to some of these campgrounds are like angled and things. Like I feel like that there's some that are worse than others. Yeah. And I've seen horror stories of people like pulling their whole entire like back walls off of their fifth wheels sometimes with how severely dipped some campground like entrances and stuff like that can be. We'll figure this out. I feel like our MO is always like we're way behind schedule, which is exactly where we're at again. Yep. So let's uh, get this show on the road. Yes, let's do it. Feeling so ill-prepared. We did this whole like test run thing just around the block with this hooked up and that was fine. But the one thing we haven't installed yet is we got this strip of fabrics. It's called a toe defender from e-trailer. We'll link it below just so you can see what it is but it's designed to protect the toad from any rocks or debris that would come up. This is a much nicer vehicle than the Jeep was, so we really want to protect it, but we haven't installed it yet <laughs> because we didn't really need to install it to just make sure that this was working fine, which it was, hopefully, for the long haul. But anyway, so now we got to get that installed. So we need to get that put on, hopefully quickly, so we can get on the road. So I'm gonna put it in tow mode now. We've done this like two or three times only. And the interesting thing, like I feel like that 
I'm so nervous and this is part of the reason why I'm so nervous is because we towed our Jeep for five years. So for five years, everything was the same process over and over. Like the way we hooked up the safety cables, the way we hooked up the lights. I mean, everything was the same process. And now the process has changed and I'm so nervous because I'm afraid we're gonna get something wrong because I haven't done this over and over for five years. This is like now my fourth time doing this. Now the more times that we do it and we do it over and over again, just like even with RVing, right? Like it becomes easier and you become more confident because you've done it multiple times. All right, so here we go. So, okay, so if I remember correctly, I don't put my foot on the brake to start. Tap, and I tap. have to basically put this in accessories, which is twice. Then I do put my foot on the brake, pull this into neutral, not drive. Now with your foot on the brake still, because obviously it would roll forward, right? So you're gonna do this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, neutral, toe enabled. Leave transmission in neutral. And then I can shut this off. Oh, <gasps> that's not shutting it off. I started it. <laughs> okay, please tell me it's still, okay, still. If you do have your foot off the brake, it won't start. The message is still there. I know, that was my yeah. bad. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, this you know. is, now this is only my fourth time. You'll get the muscle memory after a couple times of doing it. That's, that's my point. And that's why I'm just, I'm so nervous. Okay, let's just move forward. <laughs> couple things that we installed to help uh, protect the toad, the new toad, is uh, this Roadmaster toe defender that we got from e-trailer. And so what it does is basically protect from any elements, debris, dirt, rocks from coming up underneath and hitting the toad. Pretty simple install to be honest. We've got the, the catch can, the oil catch can that I'll show you here that I installed. And so that will catch any oil and so it's not being pushed back onto the toad as well. Now time to finish hooking up the toad and get on the road. So we're finally ready to get off now. We decided we were gonna go ahead and try this one more time, pulling out of here with the toad attached with the drop hitch. I think if Ben just goes super slow and eases out of here, we're not gonna drag. So we're gonna find out if we do, we're gonna have to change our process. But finally, like literally this is hours later, cause I forgot we had to put on the tow guard thing. Ha <laughs> ha, oops. All right, let's go. Ready, Alaska? Let's go. You gonna go to the doctor? Oh, stretch, stretch. Since there's a line for fuel, we're gonna have to wait a few minutes for this. I'm gonna take him over to the dog park. One of the cool things about a lot of the Love's travel stops is they actually have like a bona fide like dog park area. So I'm gonna take him over there while you're waiting for fuel and then we need to just check on things in the back. Yep. We had a little mishap when we were first pulling out where the brake was <gasps> adjusted correctly. Dang it, this guy pulled in for me. <laughs> oh man. Maybe you just need to inch your way up closer in line. So I just was back checking on the expedition and so far so good, everything looks fine. A couple things that I've been paranoid with is just like the tires, you know, make sure they're not, I don't know. I just, we had issues with the Jeep when we first got started. And so I'm just, anyway, paranoid, I guess is probably the best word to use to describe it, but it's just back there checking. Everything seems to be good. The other thing that seems to be good is that I'm not seeing any oil residue from that blow by, which we still have to show you what we did there because much better solution, not rednecked. But everything looks good as far as expedition's clean and no oily residue, which is amazing. We're a little less than halfway, so we still have a ways to go yet tonight. So, 
fingers crossed, everything continues to go well. You know, when things don't go perfect on the road, it is nice knowing that once we do reach our destination, we'll be getting a great night's sleep. And that is because of an upgrade we made a few years ago. We replaced our factory RV mattress with an Aurora Lux hybrid mattress from RVmattress.com. And it's been great having a mattress that helps us get the rest we need. Their mattresses come rolled up in a box and wrapped in plastic. So the shipping process is not only super simple, it's really easy to get through the door of an RV. And we recently ordered another size mattress for a daybed project that we have coming up as well. And speaking of reno projects, RV mattress has a large variety of sizes available to fit most any RV bed, RV bunk, or you can do like we're doing and pick a size to fit your custom build project. RV mattress's parent company, Brooklyn Bedding, also has a full lineup of mattresses and accessories for home as well as the RV. This past year, we upgraded all of the mattresses at our Glamper Hideaway with Brooklyn Bedding, so we know our guests get a good night's rest, and so do we when we are staying at the Hideaway. Since RV Mattress has a factory in Arizona, not only is shipping free, it's also really fast and their mattresses come with a 10-year warranty. We do want to thank RV Mattress for sponsoring this video. You can visit rvmattress.com forward slash grateful and save 25% off with the code grateful. The link will be in the description below. All right, back to some road trip madness. All right, so we're on the side of the road at the moment because the brake is stuck on on the expedition and we don't know why. So, gotta figure that out because we're toasting our brakes at the moment. The brake is not even warm. So I don't even think it's so really it's a brake. false alarm? Yeah, it's false. It's not even braking. Uh, well, hold but, on, are the brake lights on on the back? This is what I was concerned about. Is the brake on? So there's an indicator in the RV and it keeps showing us that the brakes are on, so therefore we're thinking that we're just dragging it. And then you second guess yourself because you start thinking, oh, well maybe things do feel heavier, like if the brakes were on, right? And there's resistance and so then you're like, oh. like <laughs> You do this whole thing of mental gymnastics when you see something like that and then it's hard to know for sure. Like, is this just my mind playing tricks on me or is this really happening? But you don't think it was on even though the lights showed that it was on? I don't think so because it's not even breaking the car. They're not even warm to the touch. So it's not even actually breaking the car. So you think it's not working at all? I don't think it's even like breaking. Well, we would know for sure if you went up there and hit the brakes and I could sit back here and watch the brake yeah, pedal, but I feel like we're not in a good spot to breaking. do that right now. Lots of traffic here. Yeah. This is exactly what I was worried about is trying to do this shakedown trip in this condition. Right here shows it on, and I'm not touching the brake right now, so, and so like, and then it flashes. I'm wondering well, and it's like, it's just. Is there a reset on this? Like, is there a way to just reboot it? Yeah, just unplug it, probably. So I just reboot it, and now the light's off. Let's see the brake now it turned on so now let's see if it turns off it doesn't uh, well there. Oh, there it went so now maybe it just need to be restarted I don't know I mean let's hope so because either way where we're at but you you checked it and you're sure that the brakes weren't stuck on yeah. right so that's yeah. that's the first and foremost because if those if we were just dragging this for the last half mile yeah those would, brakes should be like smoking they would be hot yeah so that's good so it's just a matter of maybe maybe this just isn't getting an accurate reading right that could be but and there's no range extender on it either which is weird yeah so we might have to just do some further troubleshooting tomorrow when we're in a safer location too. Yeah, because look at the traffic. Well, we're just not in a very good spot right now. Yeah. Right. So, okay, well, let's keep going and just hope we can get to where we need to go safely, first and foremost, and then to be continued on that. All right, I think I might have found a solution. It's a catch tank from Pittsburgh power uh, not sponsored or anything and not cheap so this will go right up in here the tank will fit right in here 
mount on the bracket. The bracket is gonna mount right to the frame. And then I'll be able to come in here and just boop, drain it, close it off. And then any of the fumes will just come out right over here on the side. It'll be a little more robust than the catch can that I had here. I feel a lot better with it going into this metal catch can here that's uh, not plastic and could be uh, you know, blown off by a, you know, a rock or two. Solves a big problem for me in the fact that our new toad, we've got the new Expedition. I did not want this white rig, beautiful white rig getting all oily and dirty like the Jeep had gotten because behind the RV, it just sucked up those fumes into the radiator and just when we turned on the air conditioner or heater, it really smelled really bad. I put a clamp on here, put this little plastic piece right here. And then this plastic piece is going to clamp onto the breather tube. As far as I can go. But you have to stretch. Look at that. Blackstone grilled cheese, baby. <laughs> oh. Hi. Hi. It has been an interesting several days here in the Keys. We are up a creek, literally without a paddle. 